here we go. All I gotta do is hit dial. Mm. Mm. Folks, it is August 11th, 5.25 a.m. Booming up the coffee as usual. Gonna read a book, gonna get to work. Let's do this. It is 7.40 in the morning. It is time to get to work. I'm usually in the office by now, but today, taking a little bit slower, getting myself together, feeling really relaxed. So I made it to the office. I stopped by the gas station, but unfortunately the power was out because we had a uh, we had a storm here yesterday. So a lot of trees are all over the place. Power is out in most places. So let's hope to God that the office has power because we're in trouble. <laughs> Moment of truth right here. Here we go. Woo, we got power. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get to work. It's early in the morning. I'm the first one here. First order of business is to thank my fellow client one of you guys, Richard, for this beautiful water bottle. Actually, I've been using it all week long. It saves a lot of plastic and it saves me a lot of walking back and forth to get these tiny water bottles. And he also got me this amazing shirt that says Realtor. I'll be there for you with the Friends and logo. So that was the first time a client ever got me a closing gift. So thank you so much, Richard. Much, much appreciated, brother. Now let's get to work. Here's the synopsis of what's going to happen today. Obviously, we're going to do some cold calling. We're gonna do some following up, and then we have appointments starting from one o'clock. We got a showing, we got another showing, we got a possible preview, and in between, we're gonna figure out a way to film, edit, and post a YouTube video for you all. Last week's vlog, I asked you guys what kind of content you wanna see. I read through your comments and feedback, so I got a couple ideas of what I'm gonna do. As always, if you enjoy the vlogs, please just take a couple of minutes, hit that like button for me, leave a comment below with your thoughts and feedback. Why is this computer off? Uh-oh. And subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed. What is, oh no, come on. Come on, we got power, we should have, there we go. And as I wait for my computer to load up, I wanted to hop on real quick and provide a little bit more clarity on how the preview appointments work, what you're supposed to say, some of the mistakes I've been making going to these, and then what I've been learning as I, you know, as I go and week by week by week, you know, trial and error, because that's the only way I learn, because I'm an idiot. <laughs> so, in last week's vlog, if you watched far enough, you'll notice I was mentioning that I had just left the preview. If I was very a little bit nervous because I didn't have I didn't really talk to the person as much, I just set the appointment and I was kind of going in the dark. And that got me thinking, I'm like, you know what? I'm having a big issue with I get to the preview, they show me the house, I provide feedback, right? Super easy. I'm having an issue transitioning the conversation from thank you, have a nice day to bringing up the idea of listing the home like my true intentions at the end of the appointment like again i'm not there to convince them you do not convince them to list with you because you know, that, that's like a bait and switch right but you want to set yourself up for a future conversation so the line that's what's really been messing me up is the initial phone call here's why i've been struggling with the transition because in the script which is a line i've been skipping the last line is, is, is as follows. Great, and when we get together, would you be okay if I shared some of the details of my for sale by owner backup plan and how it all works? Boom. And if they say yes to that, to that, then obviously now I have a transition to when I get to the appointment, I can be like, so great, thank you so much for oh, showing this house. You know, you're probably gonna end up selling it on your own, but the off chance you can. As we discussed in about four to six weeks, I just want the opportunity to interview for the job. So that's been the biggest issue I've had is those transitions at the actual appointment and the actual cause of it was got, had nothing to do with the appointment. It was everything to do with the initial phone call. So if you guys are doing the same thing with the for sale by owners, I recommend you do that as well. And that concludes our little bit of lesson for today. Let's get back to work. I think the computer's back up. It's 8, 12 a.m. So here's the schedule for the next 15 minutes. I'm gonna look up houses for buyers and then I'm gonna prep the list that I'm gonna cold call today, which should be relatively quick because I cold called yesterday. I did something different this week. On Sunday, I had a showing early in the morning at 10 a.m. near my office and I decided, you know what? I'm gonna show up and I'm gonna call on Sunday. When I showed up, there were 20 for sale by owners. I was like, holy moly. And I'm so glad I called those uh, for sale by owners because there's no way I would have made those phone calls on Monday, right? Because Monday, I was just not feeling it for some reason. So when Monday rolled around, there's only four for sale by owners to call. I was able to bang that out relatively quickly and I was already ahead of, uh, ahead of myself for the week. So that's why, you know, if you have time on a Sunday and if you're in the mood, get in there, do some work. Looks like we got six for sale by owners for today. It is 8.45 a.m. on the dot, which means it is Showtime! I gotta do something that I hate, but I must do because 
what I hate results into what I love, which is money. <sighs> Here we go. All I got to do is hit dial. And again, I get asked this all the time. I use the red X to get the, uh, get the phone numbers. The red X. Go on their website. There's a whole bunch of tutorials. That part's over. I just hit dial. Woo! Let's do this. Hey Frank, this is Aram. I'm a real estate agent with Remax. I saw your house for sale in Northbrook and I understand you're selling it by owner, correct? Of course, anytime. I'm just, I understand. I, that's why I, I, I could read. <laughs> I'm curious if you'd be open to working with an agent if they brought a qualified buyer or are you trying to keep it 100% owner to buyer? Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so do nothing out of your side. Fair enough, fair enough. Well, I appreciate your time, so you have a good day. This morning, we are striking out, folks. That's okay. The mean ones just mean that the juicier one is, is in the making. Hello there. This is Aram. I'm a local realtor with Remax. I saw your house for sale on Sleeping Bear, and I understand you're selling it by owner, correct? Dang it. <laughs> fair enough fair enough in this week's time are you open to working with an agent if they brought you a buyer or are you trying to keep it just you are okay perfect perfect so i will keep that in mind if something comes up in the next week or so i will definitely give you a shot if not i will see you on the mls that was a strikeout but here's why i didn't pursue it because they're about 40 minutes away from my house and for me to drive that far for just a preview it has to be a pretty uh qualified person in my, in my book. So we're gonna keep it moving. Hello Edmund, this is Aram. I'm a local realtor with Remax. I saw your house for sale on Odell Avenue and I understand you're selling it on your own. Is that right? Oh, gotcha. So are you just kind of testing it out on Zillow before you do anything else? Am I understanding you correctly? Okay. Do you have plans of uh, putting it on the market with an agent in the coming few weeks or months or are you just kind of testing the market out of curiosity? All right, well, technically the last phone call of the day is queued up. Let's see what happens. And it's a voicemail. So that concludes the call session for today, but but here's the issue. I didn't really set any appointments, and which means tomorrow we're gonna have a dry day and we cannot have that happen. So here's what I'm thinking about doing, because it is only 8.59 and now where's my schedule? I have prospecting uh, time until 9.30. So what I would like to do in this time is go back to some of the old foot sale by owners, the ones I maybe never called or uh, called they ever picked up, this and the other, and see if we could put something together there. So it is 9.19 a.m. And as I was going through the list to prep, you know, what for sale by owners I wanna keep calling, I found a few of these that have the email addresses, right? So I'm like, you know what? They've been on the market for 50 days, 60 days, 70 days and they have an email address listed. So why not just send them an email email and try to pitch them that way? Here's exactly what the email says. You guys are welcome to carbon copy it. It goes like this. Hello, my name is Aaron Gazarian, a local realtor with Remax First. I'm sure by now you have heard a million different pitches from agents trying to list your home. I'm not here to convince you to list with an agent. Quite frankly, it makes a lot of sense to list by owner in today's market. That being said, if you decide to explore other options, I would love the opportunity to walk you through how my for sale by owner backup plan works. There are no long-term contracts and offer a flexible commission structure to ensure you net as much as possible. And I have some links about my Facebook and my reviews, this, that, and the other. So the for sale by owner backup plan is part of, you know, the Brandon Mulren and training that I do. So it's basically a full listing, right? You take it at your full commission, but you offer some extra, the way you present it is almost as a backup plan. Here's how it works. So it's a full blown listing full commission, all that. The flexible commission means this. If I am able to find a buyer, for example, it's like a dual agency situation, then the commission comes down to just like 3% instead of 5%, right? So that's the flexibility part of the commission. It's not that we're discounting it. It just where it gives opportunity there for them to net a little bit more if I'm able to bring the buyer. All right, it's currently 10.40 a.m. I just finished up follow-up, so now we're gonna get in the next room and film a couple of videos. So I don't usually show you guys this part of the office, which is a little hallway I walk down. Our office front door is all the way down there. I walk down this hallway because I am in a separate unit when we go into the studio. I got the key for myself because I'm special. <laughs> so I come in, I lock it down, and then I film. And you've all seen the studio before. Boom. I like to switch it up every now and then, but it's mostly the same thing. All right, let's do this, folks. 
I'm gonna let the camera roll a little bit, give you that behind the scenes feel of it all. And there is a missing tile up there, it drives me crazy. That's why the camera's always angled this way. <laughs> There's less than a thousand dollars worth of equipment in this room, which I think that includes the furniture, the, the mics. When I get rich, I'll dish the wires and I'll get a wireless lab mic. But in the meantime, we will have to make do with what we got, folks. All right. And then what we're gonna do is a smooth zoom in action. This is the hard part, getting the angles right. So here's a little, you know, behind the scenes information for you. When you have a camera like this, it's a little bit more complicated to work with. That's why I say, just start with your phone, make your life much easier, right? When you have a camera like this, once you get used to using it, you no longer film in auto, you film in manual. What that means is the lighting is, is manual, the exposure is manual, and the focus is manual. So what I have to do is, put some stuff on the chair that I'm gonna sit in, focus it beforehand, then press record, and lock in that focus. That's what gives it that defined look where you can see me clearly and the background's a little blurry. Ladies and gentlemen, we are done with the video tour. Oh, that's a nice little picture back there, isn't it? But this one took a while. I didn't realize it would take over 20 minutes just to go over all the practical advice I have for you all. So please, when I post it, just go check it out. If you're watching this vlog, it's actually already up. So I'll put a card right here for you. Click it when you're done with this video, go watch it. Let me know what you think. Let me know if I missed something. Currently 11.46 a.m. I have a 1 p.m. showing that's about 20 minutes away. I think this is a perfect, perfect time. Take a quick little lunch break. So here's the situation, it's 12.29. I got a showing in, at 1 p.m. and five, it's five minutes away. I have been trying to find a place to eat, but I don't know if you guys know, I mentioned earlier today, there was a huge storm here, so a lot of places have no power. I was gonna go to Culver's, they had no power. So I am here at a KFC, I haven't had this in like years. We're gonna chow down a little bit. Showing is a wrap, and uh, this is actually a showing for a client that I was not expecting to close for at least two, three months, but they like the house. Basically what's gonna happen is I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna do the research, but before I do, just like anything else, if you're gonna submit an offer on a, on a property, you always wanna talk to the listing agent first, get an idea if there's any competition you're dealing with, and especially in the case of a short sale, I have to figure out what is the approved price by the bank that we can get this deal done within a month and a half. Uh, if that number is close to asking price, we may have to wait like three to six months for the bank to approve a new price. So I'll head on to my house, get all this taken care of, and hopefully by, it's 126, hopefully by 3 p.m. I'm submitting another offer, Woohoo! All right, folks, we went home, we ran the numbers. Uh, they're asking 260 for the house. I felt 230 was the right price. I don't think we're gonna get it, but we submitted the offer anyway. Now it is 3.58, I'm heading over to the showing. I got it at four o'clock. And then at 7.30, we have a preview appointment. So what I'm gonna do in between, God, I have no idea. But that was a quick one, it is currently 4.13. We were in and out of that house uh, relatively quickly because the buyer didn't really like it. And that's how you know as a real estate agent, you get to, you get to see the same responses over time, right? When Whenever somebody walks through and is not asking too many questions or uh, just kind of going through the motions, you can tell by the way they don't like the house. So that was it. And another thing is I always tell my clients always compare whatever we see to their last, their favorite house, right? I showed this client a home yesterday that he kind of liked. Show him this home today. I'm like, do you like this one more than you like the one from yesterday? He's like, no, I like yesterday's house more. Perfect. So that rules out today showing instantly, and I still keep yesterday's house in contention. And if we can't find anything worthwhile in the next couple of days, that might be something we pursue. All right, my people, I decided to come to uh, Starbucks and get some work done here. Oh, a nice little background we got here, but <laughs> it's uh, 4.35. I got pretty much two hours to kill. I'm gonna edit that video, I'm gonna post it. It is time to get to this preview appointment. It's gonna be at 7.30, and it's about a 35 minute drive. Only issue is I still need to get gas, so I gotta go. Gentlemen, we are here at the preview appointment. This is the neighborhood. It's actually a pretty nice place. I've never been here before. The unit we're gonna see is actually behind me. I'm five minutes early, which is the way I like it. I like them to know that I'm punctual, but I got things going on, so I'm not too early. For this one, I have no feedback prepared because he did everything proper. So all I did was on the phone call, I did say I'm gonna go over my for sale by on a backup plan, which I'm going to do right now. We just wrapped up the preview appointment. I'll be honest, this one did not go as expected. It went better and then it went worse than expected. Here's what happened. This was the first phone call where I actually, before I made the appointment, I said, hey, would you be okay if I discussed my for sale bond or backup plan with you when we meet? And he said yes. So this was something I was doing like the new approach, right? The, the proper approach, you could say. I get there, we do the tour and I'm like, you know, like I mentioned, is it okay if I go over my for sale bond or backup plan? He's like, sure, let's go into my office. 
we go into his office and I explain how the backup plan works. I'll be honest, I was a little nervous because it was my first time actually saying it out loud. But So I was trying to go off of memory and I, I think I did a pretty decent job. However, he was like, I'll be completely honest with you, man. I've, I've been hearing different quotes so far. The 3.5 to 4% is, is what I'm hearing most commonly and that's kind of what's got my interest. That's what I want to pay. I'm like, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so that basically he's essentially looking to, to discount the rate and maybe work with the discount broker, right? And then the way he said it, I was like, wait a minute, it sounds like you're like sounds like you're definitely interested in listing the house because I you know I don't wanna over overstep my bounds here. I know you're listing it by owner. And he's like, No, 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 I'm ready to go. In like three days I'm listing with an agent. That's it. I'm like, oh so that goes to show guys you could just you ne could never listen to what they're gonna say you know on the phone they may say they're a month away but then you meet in person you find out they're already interviewing agents now on a final note it's 7 44 p.m i got a 30 minute drive before i get home and one of the youtube comments on the video i posted today about the practical advice somebody asked me how do we save for retirement what a fantastic question i can't tell you what to do but i'm gonna tell you what i plan to do as a real estate agent, your income can come in bulks, right? You can make 20 grand one month, 10 grand another month, zero dollars the next month, right? So when those bulks come in, you gotta number one, prepare your taxes properly so you could get a, get a loan and start investing in real estate. As an agent, you see the deals before anybody else. Plus, you get 2.5% back when you buy a place. So essentially, if you use a 3.5% FHA loan, you can buy a property with 1% down. So that is your retirement plan. If you could buy a property every year or two, right? It's gonna cost you maybe five to 10 grand cash up front to buy the property. You do that every single year for 10 years or 20 years, however long you wanna do it. All of a sudden, you have 20 properties paying you rent and you know you could retire like 45, depending on how young you start, right? So that is my retirement plan. I plan to invest in real estate and then other businesses. I don't plan to be a real estate agent in production for the rest of my life uh, because I think there's there's, I know there's no cap to our uh, income, but you know there's no billionaire real estate agents, right? There's no a real estate agent with a net, net worth of a hundred million dollars, right? This is a one to maybe ten million dollars a year type of business. I would eventually would like to be in my thirties and forties, be into that, uh, into a place where the vehicle could get me to that ten, twenty, thirty, forty million dollar range. I know it's super ambitious and it may sound it may sound crazy. But that's that's what I'm that's what I'm shooting for right now, and that is the goal. That's where the ambition is. But that is how you prepare for retirement, ladies and gentlemen. Use real estate as the vehicle and uh, start establishing some rental properties. I highly recommend if you're a young buck and if you're already living on your own. Okay, stop that nonsense. I hope you're not renting. Here's what you have to do: go start start looking for multifamily residential properties, two to four units. You can get an FHA loan. You could be approved for significantly more on a two to four unit multifamily than you could on a regular single family or a condo. For example, me, the way I did my taxes was horrible. However, uh, I was able to get approved for 325,000 on a multifamily and 150,000 if I went on a regular sale, right? So use that to your advantage. Every year you buy a new one because you have to live in it one year before you can uh, get a loan again and rent it out. So do that. Every year you're buying a multifamily, 3.5% down, boom. All of a sudden you'll find out you have everything you need to retire. And that's how we do it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this was helpful, brought some value to you. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Oh, that's a nice F-type. Like, comment, and subscribe. I will catch you on the upside. Take care.